All right, thank you very much for uh, inviting us to this uh, presentation. I'm Fel, uh, US sales manager here at Gentechio. Very happy to be there uh, to connect with our customer base and learn uh, from uh, companies for new applications and, uh, and solutions on the market for, uh, for the photonics industry. So, okay, so 15 minutes, 10 minutes to talk about inline monitoring of high power laser beams. So I will introduce you guys to a new product we've released recently, as well as some concepts to like dual inline laser power measurement and beam profiling at the same time. So who we are as a company, Gentech EO, we started in the 70s, providing laser beam providers, power energy meters for calibrated measurement and as well as high power measurement to block high power laser beams and provide calibrated measurement, both as a standard offering and custom based solutions. We cover pretty much everything laser from consumer market to medical needs, where trustability requirements are very high, manufacturing, directed energy application, scientific application, and so on. So it's a quick overview of our uh, standard beam providers right now here in front of you. Um, long story short, the BMH 3.0 and 3.0 IR, the difference between the one being with and without the phosphor cutting to enhance the responsiveness in uh, the IR wavelength. Then the BMH 4M, which has a larger sensor size. Uh, and the latest addition to our uh, uh, portfolio of beam providers, the BMH M squared for measurement of the uh, M squared and divergence uh, factor of your laser beam. So it's based with the same kind of cameras inside of this enclosure with the moving stage to scan along the propagation axis of your beam. So this is the quick overview of what we provide here as, uh, once again, standard solutions. Uh, so it provides ISO compliant beam diameter measurement. You can select between various kind of definition, four sigma, full width, half maximum, one over a square, 86%, custom definition of, uh, of the laser beam diameter. It's up to you, standard feature here. And what you get benefiting from the 5.5 micron pixel size with those cameras, you benefit from the high resolution beam profile, direct imaging of your beam profile. Not necessarily what you would get with the relay scattering kind of system, where you get a shape, good measurement of the total size of the beam, not necessarily the relative distribution of intensities inside of your beam. So this is what we uh, offer here. Yeah, being silicon-based sensors, whether so CMOS in your case or uh, even with CCD is the same. Uh, the, those are very sensitive devices. And uh, here you can see the saturation curve um, that you have with such providers, depending on the wavelength, you get the maximum power density allowed for a given wavelength. And let's say you take a 1064 nanometer uh, laser beam for a diameter of five, millimeters, uh, you need to get below, let's say around 120 milliwatts, which is okay for covering most of the low power kind of beam applications, a laser, a laser beam profiling application, but for higher power stuff, you need attenuation, right? So this is where we release new product. Let me give you a quick overview of the accessories that we provide with our beam providers. Left side, wavelength management for making sure you get a good signal to noise ratio from UV to EIR, and then power management with filters, of course, and the beam samplers. And we'll spend some time on that later on. And as well, the, the third part uh, third part here for beam size management. We'll spend some time as well seeing how you could use camera lenses to image very large beams by uh, reflection. Okay, so the what we call the BA, the, so the beam attenuator series. This is based on such setup here. We've been inspired by the uh, laser induced DEMA threshold testing kind of setup here, where you typically have a laser source and a beam expander or a telescope or a uh, collimator to decide your beam size, then shoot that to a first uh, wedge. Typically, UV fused silica wedges to get a given percentage of transmission and give a percentage of reflection. Transmitted goes to the test sample, typically in, in those setups. Then reflected goes down to a second wedge, a second sampler, where the reflected part goes to a provider and the transmitted part goes to the power um, laser power detector. If you set the same distance between the uh, first wedge to the beam provider and the first wedge to the test sample, you can see here. You basically have an inline direct measurement of your laser power density in real time. So we basically um, take, took, took the, uh, taking this device, the um, this setup here, and um, kind of um, fit it inside of a small enclosure 
and here we present the BA32, uh, uh, as we call it. Let's spend some time on what's going on inside of this, uh, this guy. So you have the two high quality optical wedges inside of the system here. Uh, UV fused silica, once again, uh, uncoated for uh, allowing for high damage threshold in power density, and as well as a broadband kind of response, um, and orthogonal geometry. We'll see the benefits of that in a second. So let's say you have an incoming beam, input beam, 100% of your laser power, going to the first wedge as the, the, the input aperture. Uh, you have 96% in average that will be transmitted, going to whatever you need to do, your process, the beam dump, going in line in your production facility, in your production line. Then the reflection of the surface of the first wedge, roughly 4%, will go to the second wedge. Then what's, what's happening there? The transmitted part, residual beam two, goes to a beam beam dump or a power detector, a calibrated laser power detector. So you can make a calibrated measurement here of your laser power. And the transmitted part going up to the beam provider itself. Average attenuation here at 1064 nanometers around 1,900. So you get fully packaged, um, low footprint, uh, real practical kind of device here to benefit from inline power and, and profile measurement. So a quick, uh, quick work on Quick word on how this is working. So this is based on Fresnel reflection. Let's say you have the two states of polarization, which is S and P, and they both provide a different reflectance for a given incidence. Uh, first graph here on the left side here, for uh, let's say it is S, polarization state, 45 degrees angle of incidence, you got roughly 8% of uh, reflection there. For the P state, 45 degrees still, you have less than 1% reflection. So combining the two, um, wages here, orthogonal, uh, orthogonal fashion. The benefit of that is that you do not rely on the whatever the incidence is, whatever the polarization state is, you end up with a conservation of the polarization state and an average attenuation ratio, which only depends on the laser wavelength, which is, once again, for 1064 nanometers, around 2000 um, attenuation factor. Let's spend some time here. So this is a heavy slide, but I won't detail everything here. So just to show you, uh, let's let's take two randomly random polarization states. So I'm gonna go from one slide to another here. That's the second first one. What you see here, the only difference is that the S and P polarization states first one 50-50, and then from the second one 10% S, 90% P. What you see is that. So whatever the polarization is, going down to the calculations, what's, what's, what's important, what matters, is the uh, percentage of what's sampled, what, what's transmitted through the second wedge, so top right, which is in this case 0 0.051%. And once again, whatever the polarization state is, you end up with the same polarization state at the end. So this is con conserving your polarization state. So that's really reassuring. You will not impact your laser beam profile as a consequence of changing the polarization state, which, which can occur sometimes. Okay, so this is the, um, the range of products that we offer right now. Um, they offer the same attenuation. They all have the two wages inside. Uh, what's the difference in the cooling system? For the first one, it's passively cooled, 60 watt maximum. The second one, they had a beam dump, uh, helping with dissipating heat, so 150 watts maximum. Third one, you had a fan cooled uh, detector here, so it goes up to 500 watts uh, laser power at the um, level. And the latest addition to this uh, product range, product um, series is the BA32 with up to one uh, kilowatt of laser power, okay? All right, so we're, um, we're developing this uh, this product portfolio, okay? We, we wanna hear from you guys. Basically, this is how we've been doing at Gentech EO in the field, providing cutting edge uh, products for your application, listening to feedback. So what kind of power level do you wanna deal with? Inline monitoring, beam profile and power. What kind of wavelength you're using with your lasers? What kind of optical components output? What kind of uh, beam divergence, the convergence, uh, collimated, uh, collimating uh, output and optical components, working distances in your products and lines. What do you have? What do you use? Uh, do you use fiber optic couplers and, and things like that? We want to hear about this because that will impact the next releases. And uh, yeah, so next, um, beam size management quickly. Yeah, I've mentioned that. Let's say you want to image like a you want to profile a really large beam that does not fit in the this uh, uh, 19 millimeters or 32 millimeters aperture. You can shoot your laser beam to a target, diffuser, power meter, for example, to get this measurement done, large one. 
and then use the camera, the beam provider, um, equipped with the camera lens, so you can make an image of the, of the projection, of the reflection off the surface of the diffuser with a slight angle there. Uh, how this is looking like in the, in the lab, I'll show you a picture in a second. So this is here the two lenses that we offer for a different kind of field of view specs, depending on where you can you place the detector exactly and the beam provider. Uh, let us know about your exact setup needs and we'll, we'll find the right option for you for sure, depending on the sensor size, the attenuation uh, requirements. And this is how this is looking like in the, uh, in the lab. You see it's a laser beam targeting the HPE, the high power detect uh, detector uh, device here for a calibrated measurement of power, NIST traceable once again. And then you have the camera looking at this, uh, this beam dump uh, to make the, uh, the measurement itself equipped with the camera, okay? So, all right, feel free to use a product finder online. That will be a very nice introduction to a product depending on your list of specs before we talk and use the resources that we have online. We have a, a huge amount of publication there, how to blog article, this is free. Please use it and uh, I'll be very happy to talk to you guys after that.